Good morning, afternoon and, ev and evening to uh, our audience joining here today. I know this time slot is quite generous to a few countries around the globe. My name is Gianna Tavio and I have the pleasure today of moderating the webinar, which will focus on how accounting professionals and also small business owners can save valuable time and money through the automation of tasks like sales data entry and transaction categorization. Just as some internal housekeeping, throughout the webinar, there'll be some interactive polls popping up across your screen, tailored to give us an understanding of how you all leverage accounting technology. It'd be awesome if you could look to submit these answers where relevant. We've also saved a couple of minutes at the end of today's discussion for questions. So should any questions come to mind throughout the discussion that you'd like to raise with any of our panelists, feel free to share them in the chat box and we'll look to cover them off. Today, I'm joined by Martin Chi and Brendan Bruce. As a quick introduction to each, Martin is the CFO and co-founder of Amica, while somehow doubling up as well as a partner at a boutique accounting firm, ECSK. He's been actively involved in a number of technology startups within the accounting and finance industries, and is passionate about implementing technology to achieve efficiencies and to strengthen the quality of small business decision-making. Being in the accounting industry for the last 10 years has actually allowed Martin to experience a great deal of disruption, which he believes will continue at an even greater pace than ever before. Brendan, on the, on the other hand, is a proud long life cat lover, which translates to the title of CEO and co-founder of technology company Uncat. He's a serial entrepreneur that is passionate about automation and AI driven solutions. Among some fun facts that Brendan can share with you, Brendan can let you know that the top sources of uncategorized expenses are Amazon, Costco, and Walmart, while the top sources of uncategorized deposits range from cash, Venmo, and PayPal, with the average number of uncategorized transactions each month sitting at 27. Brendan is actually an avid adventurer who unfortunately has to take a short break from his ultra racing after colliding with a bear on his bicycle. True story. Thanks for joining us today, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Appreciate it. So look, before diving into the discussion, I was hoping, you know, each of the panelists can provide a quick introduction of the respective companies. Martin, if you want to start off with Amica. Yeah, sure. So um, at Amica, we develop accounting integrations, uh, business automations, as well as some business reporting tools. Uh, we have quite an array of products at the moment, um, ranging from integrations between point of sale systems and e-commerce systems with accounting packages such as Xero, Sage, MYAB, and QuickBooks. We also have document signing automation with Xero and DocuSign, um, as well as some reporting automations that plug into uh, applications such as Shopify and Square. Um, and, and broadly, we like to help accountants and bookkeepers and business owners to save time and money, as well as to give them better insights into their business data. Awesome. Thanks, Martin. And Brendan, maybe over to you about Uncat. Yeah, sure. Uh, the short version of the story is my co-founder, Adam, got tired of sending spreadsheets of uncategorized transactions to his clients. Um, the clients didn't like it, and his bookkeeping team got tired of it as well. So we built an app for that called Uncat. So we automatically notify uh, small, medium-sized businesses about their uncategorized transactions so the clients can provide responses. And then the accountants and bookkeepers can categorize those transactions and sync them back into QuickBooks Online or Xero or QuickBooks Desktop. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Look, definitely solving two very important and uh, huge problems across the accounting technology space. Now, look, jumping into the discussion, while the objective of this webinar is give our audience an understanding of how they can save ample time through data automation, be it through an accounting integration for point of sale or transaction categorization. We're going to focus on the cornerstone of this being accurate data. Now, irrespective of how clean and smooth an application is, there's a saying that speaks true, and I'm sure the guys can attest to this, and that is rubbish in, rubbish out. Now, to unlock the true and ultimate benefits of any application, the validity and accuracy of data of the source data feeding in is paramount. Whether it's sales data, expense data, or even payroll information, the cleanliness of you or your client's data will ultimately translate to the output of the various technologies that you introduce across your practice. 
I'd love for our panel to share some discussions, share some examples rather, of where they've been able to build better business and insights through better or more accurate data. Uh, Martin, if you want to start this one. Yeah, sure. I mean, in terms of, um, you know, accurate data or better data, you know, I always think of data as, you know, the accuracy obviously is very important, but, you know, you also need that data to be timely as well. I mean, there's not much point in having accurate data if you're receiving it, you know, a year after the fact. Uh, you want to get accurate data that's timely so that people within a business can act on it and actually genuinely influence outcomes and make decisions. Um, in terms of Amica, you know, we obviously um, focus very heavily on the accuracy of data. It's very important as data travels from one system to another that you're maintaining its integrity. Um, and that also includes when you're transforming the data into perhaps another format or transforming it to make it more valuable to analyze and interpret in another system. Um, in particular with some of the accounting integrations that we have, um, when it comes to accurate data that's being transformed, um, we like to make sure that users are able to maximize the uh, view that they have on a particular set of data. So as an example, um, let's say you might have multiple venues. You might want to be able to split that data as it comes into your accounting package for comparison purposes. So comparing the performance of one venue to another. Um, or, or you might want to drill down into that data a bit deeper within an accounting package and group certain products together so that you can um, see trends or that you can better analyze margins on, on different subsets of products. Um, so those are some of the examples that, um, that, that I've got that we allow users to um, sort of take advantage of using some of our products. Yeah, no, awesome. And look, yeah, obviously that time, the timeliness of data, but also being able to have that data flowing through to the accounting software in a flexible manner as well in a way that, you know, users want to see it is definitely a, an important aspect of that. And Brendan, I'm sure when it comes to un, unreconciled and uncategorized transactions and deposits, you know, painting that full picture would, uh, would obviously help uh, when it comes to data and uh, building more reliable data, right? Yeah, I mean, definitionally, there's there's not much that's less accurate than saying uncategorized. It's basically throwing up your hands and saying, I really don't know. It could, it could be anything. Um, so uncategorized doesn't play real well in a, in a budget or a projection. Uh, tax authorities don't love it. Uh, it tends to trigger audits uh, when it gets to a high enough number, uh, number of transactions or high enough uh, dollar figure. So yeah, our, our mission is to basically get rid of uncategorized by helping you get get responses back from clients faster and easier than the old way. We used to use spreadsheets. Some people take screenshots or have client meetings, but it's just, it facilitates a, a faster communication to just automatically notify the client, get their response. Sometimes you know really what it was, but you don't know what bucket to put it in. Uh, for example, going out to eat, that could be a family meal, in which case it's an owner's draw. You could be taking a client out. You might be able to expense it, or it could be a meeting with your engineering team. And at least here in the US, you could take an R&D tax credit for it. So it's the same meal. We just need more information to know how to categorize it. And, and of course, like you said at the top, we see a lot of transactions from big box stores, uh, big e-commerce giants like Amazon, Costco, Walmart, Target, et cetera. And we see a lot of deposits from Venmo, PayPal, Stripe, Square. We almost all get those, um, but those aren't typically our customer. That's just a payment method. And so we need to ask to find out where we should put it. Yeah, I can see Martin nodding his head when he puts his, you know, accounting hat on how frustrating the uh, unreconciled expenses and transactions can be come month end when, you know, you're trying to reconcile books and move on to next quarter. Um, but yeah, no, it's quite funny and, and definitely quite true. Um, look, on the flip side, right, like inaccurate data or untimely data can also, you know, have significant ramifications for the small business owners in, and in some instances for the audience, their clients which should still be considered, um, you know, in the fiduciary capacity of an accountant, right? Like not only will untimely data impact the way that businesses are managed, for example, cash flow or expense management, but also in relation to regulatory compliance. And, you know, with a large portion of our audience here today, Marty, maybe you could start giving your background, but 
how have you seen accurate data or the stress of ensuring it's up to date and accurate help your clients avoid audits or you know maybe avoid authorities digging deeper into certain accounting files yeah i mean look in terms of uh, audits you know let's say by a tax authority or some kind of regulatory authority uh, accurate data is certainly going to help you mitigate some of the risk um, for being targeted for an audit um, but also you know that aside as well you know sometimes you can't completely uh, remove that risk but certainly um, if you've got accurate timely data you can reduce the time spent having to deal with an audit um, I think having accurate data generally implies that you've, you've probably got some good system in place that's got checks and balances uh, there to ensure mistakes are avoided and you know apps like Uncat um, you know some of the products that Amica has it allows for more people to interact with the data and like as a general a general principle you know if something's being shared or looked at a few times you know there's a few different sets of eyes on it um, the tendency is that you know mistakes get picked up or inaccuracies get get picked up um, it's often the case these days that a lot of these authorities are uh, they have quite sophisticated systems in place in terms of benchmarking you know whether that's benchmarking against other businesses within the same industry um, whether it's benchmarking against your own businesses prior performance uh, and they're very good at picking up anomalies uh, and mistakes so if if trends are deviating um, you know past a certain point uh, a lot of what happens uh, over here in Australia um, is that you just get an automated letter and they'll just, you know, very light touch say, hey, you know, is this correct or is there something that, um, you know, you need to correct? So they're, they're quite proactive in the way that they engage uh, now to also serve as a, as a mechanism to pick up mistakes. And obviously they're very interested in people under, under reporting things. Um, but uh, in terms of, you know, having a, a specific product in place, such as an accounting integration, you know, obviously in terms of uh, accurate data, you know, it's very important that if you're automating um, transactional data coming across from, you know, whether it's a POS system or an e-commerce system into an accounting package, you need to ensure that these things are set up correctly. You know, a lot of times when we're talking about manual, manual data entry, you know, obviously things can be coded incorrectly, you know, whether that's allocated to an incorrect general ledger account, uh, you know, whether that's an incorrect tax rate applied to, you know, a certain product, you know, all of these things you can kind of minimize and eliminate um, if you've got an integration that's, that's in place and it's been set up. Um, the other point um, I mentioned earlier is that if you are in the unfortunate position of having to deal with an audit, if you've got accurate data, then you know, obviously it's going to look a lot better if you're able to provide that to, you know, whatever authority it is um, in a nice clean way. Um, so, you know, go going back to maintaining the integrity of data as it goes from one system into the other, uh, you know, if you can clearly demonstrate that you've got POS information or e-commerce information that perfectly lines up with your accounting package, then, you know, obviously it's going to be, um, it's going to make the job a lot easier for someone that's auditing that information yeah no that, that's an awesome point and something that we have also seen across the um across the u.s space particularly when it comes to u.s sales taxes at, at the time of onboarding a lot of accountants and bookkeeping professionals really engage with our support to understand you know tax treatments of certain sales items and how the integration handles it so yeah that's a really good call out um brendan what is this something that you've also seen within the space like are people always trying to um, engage with you and your support team to make sure that, you know, um, understanding how the technology will actually um, help them from a regulatory perspective? Yeah, certainly. And I, mean, I think it's, it's on the, it's on the spectrum of extreme, right? Like it's like, oh no, an audit, like this is a, this is a big problem. And so it's really, ours is a preemptive tool. Like let's, let's not get there at all. And usually the problem surfaces more of, great, we're handing your books over to the tax professional and they're staring at a million dollars and ask my accountant. Uh, 
or office supplies looks unreasonably large, right? A lot of people will just say, oh, I don't know what it is. Let's throw it in office supplies or some other generic looking account. Or let's pop it in meals and entertainment. We'll just cover it there. And those are the types of anomalies I think that, that Martin's talking about, right? Where it just jumps out at you and says, there's no way you <laughs> bought that much ink and paper this year, right? That surely we can put these in buckets that make more sense. Um, and so, so that's that's where we're trying to intervene. Every once in a while, we'll, we'll we'll hear a story where we've been helpful from a regulatory side, but it's usually more to do with just the running of the business, right? How can we how can we run an efficient, small, medium sized business? We got to know where we're spending. We got to know where money's coming in from. So if it's just a say it's a construction or trades industry business, it's a lot of cash transactions. Fantastic. But the bookkeeper takes receipt of a bunch of cash and it's like, well, what project was this for? You know, which property did you work on and how should I toss this out uh, to different clients? And so having that information back, it's information really only the client can provide, only they know. And so getting that back and putting it in, like Martin said, in a timely way. So it's not a year from now that we find out, oh, we did get paid by that customer. It's like we know when we got it that that, that, that payment's complete is a... Uh, is super helpful just because, you know, these businesses are growing. And so that's the most fun for us is, you know, it's sort of a nice um, risk mitigation or avoidance of pain to help preempt an audit. But it's really more fun to be part of the solution of like, cool, we helped you grow. Um, and that that's what we love to see. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And, you know, from a from a growth, when you see small companies growing, they always, you know, the small companies are really kind of eager to bring on more pieces of technology to automate further, which is super encouraging for us to see. Um, and then, you know, on the flip side of that, you know, that there are hundreds of apps launching literally every week within the accounting technology space. And it can actually be quite daunting for accounting professionals and, you know, then also some small business owners to know where to look from an implementation perspective. Do they look at the app store? Do they look at reviews? Do they look at Captera, which, you know, can be filled with an array of different offerings? And it can actually cause, you know, a, a piece of information overload. And, you know, while Uncat and Amica both sit on quite different sides from a use case perspective, they obviously both serve a mutual purpose in saving hours of time that would otherwise be spent on manual tasks. Now, I mean, Brendan, Anyone reconciling expenses across their accounting platform would, would have obviously felt the pain of unreconciled expenses or transactions when it comes to closing out accounts. Hoping you could share some light about how Uncap can help solve this problem. Yeah, and I know that we'll show a brief uh, demo or some slides kind of showing off both Amica and Uncap pretty shortly. But, but in brief, right, a lot of folks are transacting in spreadsheets. So you'll export a report of uncategorized expenses, income, send it to the client, wait for a response, maybe remind them a couple of times, maybe get a response back, maybe not. But if you do, then you're copy pasting information for each transaction back. And that just takes a tremendous amount of time and no one's particularly happy about it. Uh, so ours is a way to, you know, sort of disrupt that process. I mean, I drove Adam and his team nuts. And so we ended up talking with a lot of firms at a lot of conferences that said, actually, we have the same problem. Um, so we're trying to, you know, we're, we're webitizing it, if you will, right? There's spreadsheets are fantastic, right? Pivot tables, all the good stuff, but they're not great at syncing data uh, and they're not great at communication or notification. They're just not built for that. So it's not their fault. Uh, so we've, you know, Uncat's purpose built to get information back and then sync it into the right fields in QuickBooks. Yeah, no, awesome. Awesome. Thanks for that. And obviously, Martin, when it comes to, you know, transactional data, be it from your point of sale, be it from you know, your e-commerce platform, especially in this, you know, omni-channel sales environment. How does the Amica integration, hoping you can share some light on how that helps keep data not only accurate, but also timely? Yeah, I mean, look, the primary basis for uh, all of our products is, you know, data integrity and, and accuracy, you know, across multiple platforms. Um, and obviously the main benefit of that, you know, having that automation in place is just, you know, eliminating keying errors and you know other kind of errors that can arise from manual manual data entry but um i, I think you know the other point which um you know brandon made earlier is that you know when you've got systems in place and people are exposed to this information or they've got a good efficient way of communicating about the information a lot of it is preempting you know errors from occurring in the first place um you know, I really like that 
idea of giving people opportunities to engage, you know, with the accounting data and not just accountants and bookkeepers, but also people within the business and, and business owners generally. Um, I, I referred to earlier, earlier also that, you know, when data is being transformed so that it's much more usable in whatever system you're putting it into, um, you know, that, that obviously is important when you're talking about maintaining the, the accuracy and integrity of that data as it, you know, goes through an integration and uh, is transformed to conform with an accounting package, let's say. But, um, you know, when it comes to high transactional type systems, um, you know, especially when you're talking about complex kind of hybrid style systems, which a lot of these apps are evolving into now, you know, when you're talking about the likes of a Square or the likes of a Shopify, like these are quite complex hybrid kind of e-commerce um, POS style systems. Um, and it's important that you're capturing all of that transactional data, all of the components of the data. Um, you know, a lot of these systems, transactions have evolved in terms of their complexity and the number of components that they have. So it's not just, you know, have I captured the item and, and the tax, you know, oftentimes now there's fees and service charges and, you know, other transactions attached to these um, that are important to reflect accurately in your accounting package. Um, which, you know, a lot of our integrations are designed to make sure that holistically all of those things are being captured and automatically mapped to the right accounts so that they're treated correctly from an accounting perspective. Um, and the other um, thing, just following on from allowing people to engage with accounting data and communicate around accounting data efficiently. So if you've got opportunities to expose people to information that might ordinarily be nested within an accounting app. Um, but, you know, let's say they're not particularly savvy in, in using an accounting app or they just never log into the thing in the first place. Um, if you're giving them opportunities to, to see that information and to communicate around that information, again, you know, like preempting errors occurring, that's like a really great way to ensure that you know, the, the system is not allowing bad data to, to sit in there for too long um, or to be in, put in there in the first place. Um, and I think that's, that, that's sort of a, a future trend as well. So, so one of the apps that we have uh, in view, you know, it allows um, us to extract bill and, and, and sales invoice information from an accounting package and push that as calendar notifications. So if you imagine like you're a business owner and you're busy and you're checking your schedule and your calendar and you get a notification that there's a large bill that needs to be paid or there's a large um, invoice that you're expecting to be paid, um, you know, that's one opportunity for, for them to look at it and say, is that right? Or, you know, do I need to communicate something to my accountant or my bookkeeper because, you know, I might have agreed something with the customer. Um, you know, and therefore it needs to be amended. So I think um, that that's also a, a new trend that combines, you know, not just pushing data from one place to another and making sure that, you know, it's accurate, but also affording people the opportunity to interact with that data as well. Yeah, no, awesome. Thanks, guys. And I know we will be showcasing both products in their own rights and kind of showing the audience how, um, you know, these two amazing innovative products can save hours of time across the practice. Now, as a final discussion point, just wanted to kind of explore the accounting technology space, right? And, you know, an industry needs to be primed for disruption for there to be adoption and cut through with certain applications. And I know from our perspective, the accounting industry has been primed for disruption, you know, having been built on, you know, manual archaic processes that range from data entry to manual population of paper compliance forms and even filing systems. But despite you know, time savings that certain applications can provide, we've seen some accounting professionals still reluctant to adopt tools. And from our view, the reluctance actually comes from you know, fear of losing control of internal processes, lack of trust of, to these technology uh, providers, but then also the time investment to implement each solution. And this involves them opting towards sticking to, you know, just accepting existing profit margins on the manual tasks or work streams across their practice. Now, having worked at Amica for over 18 months now, and more recently working with Brendan at Uncat, 
I can honestly say that these reluctancy factors are all things that both companies have placed top of mind across product development and the way in which we conduct uh, all customer support. So guys, hoping you could kind of provide some context around how Uncat and Amica, you know, help the accounting practices actually increase margin across the firms and opposed to having more resources allocated to certain tasks, which lead to additional hiring and, um, you know, additional expenses, how these tools can, you know, mitigate that need. Um, sure, I might t take this one first. Um, look, as a basic point, you know, when you've got these kind of automation tools in place, you've got integrations in place, you know, obviously if you're eliminating manual data entry, you're going to be able to scale the amount of work that you can do. Um, you know, you also minimize the amount of time that you might otherwise spend in picking up errors and having to fix uh, errors that occur with manual data entry. Um, so, you know, th th those are the two sort of primary benefits, but I would go further now to say that, you know, that once that's covered off, you know, the other great thing about having, you know, automations and integrations in place is that, as I mentioned earlier, it gives you different views on the data. Um, you know, when you're able to transport data from one system to another, or transport data from one system to another and then transform it in a meaningful way, you know, that gives you opportunities to uh, add value to the relationship that you have. Um, you know, if you're an accountant or bookkeeper, uh, it gives you a better understanding of, you know, the business, the performance of that business. And then it gives you opportunities to have those conversations with, you know, the business owner to say, hey, you know, the reconciling and the data entry, obviously that's very important, um, you know, but let's talk about practical, um, practical things that can, improve the performance of the business, you know, whether that's analyzing sales trends or, or looking at cost trends or, you know, whatever, it, whatever it might be. So, you know, a, a lot of that, it's, it's not just necessarily about saving the time and therefore saving the money, but it's also about um, providing opportunities and not just obviously for accountants and bookkeepers, but also business owners reflecting on their own, their own business data. Um, you know, when they've got the opportunity to consume it in um, a convenient way, you know, then it comes down to being able to make practical decisions that, you know, then can influence some, some outcomes of the business. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Man. And yeah, look, it definitely does go above just margins, but I think a lot of that, you know, extrinsic value that the end clients can get through having more, you know, timely data through their accounts when it comes to financial management and stuff like that. Uh, Brendan, over to you to kind of, give a bit of a high level on how Uncap can also, you know, help increase margins um, and um, yeah, across accounting firms. I'll, I'll just add briefly, um, we heard back from so many, so our name is Uncat, right? Which is sort for uncategorized. And the U in the Uncat, if you turn it sideways is a question mark. It's, a, it's an unknown transaction, right? It's a mystery. But early on, we heard from so many people that were like, oh, yeah, those transactions. It's like herding cats trying to get information back from our clients. And we're like, this is perfect, right? Because we wanted to use cats as a mascot or as we call it, a mascot. Um, and so it's one of those things where it's like, I mean, we all do a certain amount of manual data entry that comes with any job. It's not a huge deal. But the concept of herding cats just goes to like how frenzied it can be. Right, because it's always a deadline. There's always a month end. There's a board meeting. There's a budget due. There's a tax deadline, and so this idea of like chasing all these clients uh, can get just cr literally crazy. I mean, I've got two cats at home, and the last thing I want to do is try to chase one, let alone both of them at the same time. Like they're not going to get caught. Right, they're faster than me. Um, and so that that's that's what Uncat's for. It's not just to sort of you, you know reduce some manual data entry or just to save you a little bit of time here and there. Those are nice to have. But avoiding herding cats is really kind of a must have in order to continue to grow and scale. And thankfully, at least what we've seen since we've launched is that this is a massive growth field. I mean, the, the customers that we're working with, the bookkeeping firms, the accounting firms, the independents, they're all adding more clients all the time. And that seems to be the number one driver for why, why people are looking for software. It's not just, I wanna save a little time in my day, to have a little spaciousness and be able to do other things. That's awesome. But it's more to do with like, I want to add my next 10 clients because I'd love to grow my business and I'm in demand and I'm good at what I do. So how can I plug in 
uh, everything from practice management to reporting to receipt capture to uncat to amica so that it all fits together in a nice tech stack and, and you're and you're built for growth so so that's what that's what we've seen and thankfully it's a great it's a great industry to be in i mean for everybody on the call that's in accounting and bookkeeping that's a that's a win right fantastic choice and we hope uh, being on the software side of it is a good place to be too yeah no most definitely i appreciate that guys and look again it definitely does go above you know increasing margins it's also kind of adding additional value to the end clients which you know in turn increases satisfaction and makes the small business community a much more efficient and uh, innovative sector so look guys um I want us to now hand over to our panelists to provide a bit more of a visual representation of the product we've discussed today. I know we've done a fair bit of talking about how accurate data is important, but I still think that visual aspect will, you know, provide some context to the audience um, on just how these tools solve, uh, you know, the data automation piece within the accounting sector. Um, we'll start off with with Martin and the um, Amica demo. Yep, great. Um, so, you know, with all of our products, we like to make them very easy to, to set up and get going. You know, we don't, we don't want to spend, uh, hours, uh, trying to configure things and, you know, test and, and play around with them. We like to, you know, have a, have a bit of a no nonsense approach and make it as easy as possible for users to navigate. Um, what we're demoing here is our square, uh, zero integration. Um, so very, very, um, very, very efficient to set up, very easy. Um, if you've got a Square account, um, basically you can just log in with a Square account and connect the two, the two systems. Uh, what I will mention is that this is a completely free integration as well, um, which was great. So if you've got clients that are using Square and Xero, um, you know, get, get them on board. Um, firstly, you know, you've got to connect the two accounts together. So you know, we know where we're gonna send the data to. Um, that's a very straightforward process, just authenticating um, each account and connecting it to the to the integration. Um, and our wizards, like the, the the user journey, we always try to design these things to ask as few questions as possible. You know, there's quite a lot of um, complex uh, complex things happening sort of behind the scenes, but what we present to to users, we try to make as simple as possible. Um, and a lot of this stuff is, you know, mapping, mapping things accordingly so that as the information flows into the accounting package, obviously it's, it's correct. So, you know, these will be things like tax types. And I mentioned earlier that you want to make sure that with integ an integration that you're using, it's capturing all of the transactions that um, a, system, a system is generating. Um, so for Square in particular, like the, they'll have surcharges, um, Square also has, you know, virtually like a second bank account, you know, which you can transact on as well with a debit card. Um, so that's quite an advanced um, functionality that has a number of uh, different types of transaction components attached to it. Um, and also with this integration, um, there happens to be an online payment service as well. So like if you're issuing invoices out of zero, that'll allow your customers to pay you, you know, using a credit card through the Square checkout service. Um, so after you've mapped, obviously everything the way that you want, um, this will basically go on an automatic scheduler. So every day it will just run behind the scenes. The next day, the previous day's data will appear in your accounting package. Um, and um, there you'll be able to reconcile things very, very easily. So, you know, the integration can be set up in a number of minutes. Um, the, the other thing that I mentioned earlier is that the transformation of data. So, um, you know, you might want to group certain products in a certain way, um, or you might want to have things in quite a granular, uh, presented in quite a granular way, like at the item level. So, you know, we allow users a lot of flexibility in the way that they would like to bring that information across to their accounting package. Um, where uh, we're kind of sensitive to the way people, you know, might have already been doing things. So whenever we can kind of fit in and work within existing workflows, like we, we like to do that. We don't like to completely disrupt, you know, the processes that people might have in place and, you know, make them have to relearn um, a, a new way of doing something. Um, so that's really important. 
Um, and, and when it comes to reporting on that data as it comes into the accounting package, um, all of the accounting packages these days have really, really great reporting functionality. Uh, Zero, you know, is, is, it's really great to be able to build out custom reports. And as I mentioned, you can compare performance of different um, different venues or you can compare the performance of different products. So it, it allows you to customize reports so that you can really gain those, those insights within the accounting package. Um, and, and obviously the accounting package is also going to be capturing all of the underlying business costs too. So, you know, you've got really a, a complete picture there. If you can just step back to the previous um, slide, Laura, um, one thing that I'd like to mention is that if you've got, if you're a bookkeeper or an accountant, you know, you can manage the integrations of your clients, which I think is really important. You know, that's really a value add service that you can provide to your clients, managing their integrations on their behalf. Um, I think that's a growing space and a growing opportunity for accountants and bookkeepers to really take, take ownership and, and take that role on. You know, business owners definitely don't want to have to deal with another app, you know, let alone an integration that's, that's you know, managing the flow of information. Um, between apps. Um, so that's something that, that you can do through uh, our Amica dashboard, which is, which is really handy. So you can you know, check on the health of integrations, set up multiple integrations and um, you know, add, add all of your clients in there. Um, and then the next slide, um, basically this is just an example invoice, but you can see here, you know, different types of sales, push to line items, obviously mapped to tax rates and you know, again, you've got the flexibility to map products, specific products to specific accounts or different types of transactions to specific accounts. So, you know, if you've got a pre-existing uh, chart of accounts that you've, that you've built with your accountant or that your accountant has built, um, you know, and you're wanting things to be mapped in a particular way that conforms, you can easily do that. Um, and again, that, that, that comes back to, you know, we, we, we're kind of appreciative of, people liking to do things uh, the way that, you know, they've always done them. So as much as we can, we like to accommodate that. Um, the last thing I'll mention about the integration um, or last two things rather. So again, in terms of capturing all of the transaction components holistically, um, you know, whether it's fees, merchant fees, service charges, tips, gratuities, all those kinds of things, um, you know, where, we're making sure that we capture all of those transactions and that we're, we're treating them appropriately from an accounting perspective. And as with all of our integrations, we like to make it easy to reconcile that information so that you're not spending you know, hours and hours going, what was that payment for? Like, which batch does that relate to? Um, one of the things that we always keep in mind with all of the products that we have is that we want it to be easy to use and we want, it, we want it to slot into those um, accounting and bookkeeping processes so that they're really making, you know, activities like reconciling super efficient. Um, so if you go to the next um, slide, Laura, you'll be able to see um, with our Square integration in particular, like this process is super simple. <clears throat> Square obviously is collecting payments on your behalf and settling them into your, into your everyday bank account. And literally it's been simplified to just clicking the okay button because we're capturing that settlement transaction data and making sure that it 100% matches what's happening with the live bank account that it's linked to. Um, so you're not wasting time having to trawl through transactions and go, you know, what was that deposit comprised of? Is it order, you know, one, two, three or four, five, six, you know, <laughs> whatever it might be. So, you know, we like seeing green. <laughs> Um, so as much as we can, you know, we, we like to give, uh, give the user pre-matched transactions. Yeah, no, awesome. Thanks for that, Martin. Definitely, um, yeah, highlighted the key benefits of Amica and the ease in which a user can set up an integration or an array of integration under one account. So, Brendan, I might hand over to you now to give users a demo of the Uncat platform. Sure. Thanks very much. And we... We share the same philosophy. It's easy. So this is our this is our homepage. Um, for one thing, we recognize that the bookkeeping and accounting runs on caffeine. Uh, so if you want to check out Uncat and start a free trial, we'll send you a copy, right? So we'll send you by email a little five dollar gift card to Starbucks. So 
don't forget to get your free coffee before the webinar ends. Anyway, let's let's head into the demo. Cool. So once you start a free trial, it's pretty easy. You just sign up here. You'll put in your firm name, your email, create a password for Uncat. And we can go to the next one, please. Super. And then you're going to choose your accounting platform. So uh, our flagship integration is with QuickBooks Online. That's what we launched with. That's what the majority of our customers use. But we have an increasing number that also use Xero and QuickBooks Desktop. And I'll talk about some of the differences if we have time or feel free to ask in the Q&A. Uh, once you add your first client, right? So let's assume you're using QuickBooks Online uh, or Xero works the same way. QuickBooks Desktop slightly different because it's installed software. But you'll add your first client. And so we'll, we'll go through a checklist of just some pretty easy questions. Number one, which accounts do you want to sync into Uncat? So typical suspects are uncategorized expense, income, asset. Ask my accountant if you're a Xero user, suspense is the most popular. Uh, but we see accountants and bookkeepers name accounts, all sorts of things, right? You might be Ask Brandon if I'm your client, or you could name it something totally different. We've seen some pretty funny names for these accounts. You can choose whatever accounts you want from the chart of accounts for this client to sync in. We can also sync in transactions that are already categorized, but maybe they're missing a field and you need that information back from the client. We see that a lot with nonprofits where you want the nonprofit to provide a class. But you can also say, I want to sync in everything missing a vendor or missing an attachment so you can gather that information back. And then you choose a sync start date. So by default, we sync back a year or to the most recent close date if you close the books for your clients. Uh, but if you need to go back further, let's say it's a new client and you're doing some cleanup, you want to go back a couple years and get some better data into the system, you can just change that sync date. We'll go back in time and pull those uncategorized transactions in. All right, next, please. And then notification settings. How does the client find out about these uncategorized transactions? We tell them. Uh, the typical cadence is weekly. So most of us are used to answering this. On the, I was business owner of a previous software company, and I would get a spreadsheet monthly. And the problem was I was frequently traveling half a dozen times a month. And so if it was 30 days ago, I'd kind of shrug my shoulders and be like, I can't remember what I spent when I was in the airport 30 days ago. Like I'm hustling, right? So a weekly cadence makes a lot more sense. You ask the client, hey, what was this? And they have a pretty decent chance of remembering. So that's the most popular selection. You can change it to monthly. We even have some doing daily if they're super high volume e-commerce and you need answers back right away. Uh, but weekly is the most popular. Cool. And then these are the dashboard settings. So the default is most accountants and bookkeepers just need a description back from their client. What was this transaction? What was it for? And then we'll take it from there, right? You can then categorize based on their response. Optionally, you might need a receipt. Uh, for our customers in Canada and some other jurisdictions, they make a receipt required because they have to have a receipt in order to, to basically justify that the transaction happened in real life. Um, op more optional here in the States. All right, let's go to the next one. And then if you tick that little box at the top, we call it a superpower. Think of it as a master switch. You can get more granular control over what your client can see in which fields they can edit, and which ones you want to require. So let's say you've got a more sophisticated client. They're in QuickBooks Online with you a lot. You want them to categorize the transaction, or you want them to be able to add vendors and choose classes and locations, et cetera. So you can customize it so that your client can provide you with information that you want, and then you'll see their responses in your dashboard. So it's totally configurable on a client-by-client -client basis because every client's a little bit different. And then this is a list of the client users. So some businesses are just going to have an owner. That's easy. Uh, but if the client has multiple users and you want to invite all of them, because like Martin said in uh, several answers ago, it's about getting the right eyes on the transaction, right? I don't know what my co-founder has spent on his credit card. I only know what I've spent on mine. So inviting both of the co-founders in, assigning them to their particular credit cards or to their particular uncategorized account is a really efficient way to get the right information back from the right people and not hassle everybody else with a bunch of transactions they have no business knowing about. Um, so this is how you can add client users. And then we'll notify those users, right? Typically weekly by email and optionally by text message. Uh, that's an amazingly popular feature. More and more clients these days are not uh, doing email. They're not checking it. They're not responding to it. They're hustling, they're building their business, but we're all conditioned to check text messages. And so we'll send them a little magic link in their text message and their email. And all the client has to do is click the link. 
So we want it to be dead simple for your clients to use Uncat. You know, the big, the big thing about adding more software is clients usually balk at it because it's like, oh no, it's another password to remember. It's another thing to install and maintain. It's another website to remember. Uncat doesn't work that way. They just click the magic link and it takes them straight in. They don't have to set a password. They don't have to create an account. They don't have to install an app. It just takes them straight in, which is great. That's one of the things we get the best feedback on. Uh, this is where you can invite your coworkers. So if you're in a solo shop, that's easy. But if you've got a number of colleagues that work with you, other bookkeepers, other accountants, you can invite them here and you can assign them to the right clients. That way they see in their dashboard just the clients they want and need to see. All right, and then, oh, popular, firm settings. You can put the name of your firm, add your logo. Here's a little temporary cat that we put in our demo org. And you can also change the color of the app. That way when your client lands in Uncat, they see your brand, your logo, your name, and it's I'm in the right place. I like this software and I like the firm that provided it to me. Cool, this is a little example about the notification the client will get, and that's that magic link. If they click that, it'll take them straight to the dashboard, it's one click, so super easy. And that's gonna take them to the dashboard, which looks like this. This is the default where we're just asking for a description, and then optionally they can click the paperclip and add a receipt or a PO or a contract or whatever documentation they have as an optional attachment. When they click save, it syncs into QuickBooks or Xero or QuickBooks Desktop, whatever platform you use. It's also going to show up in your dashboard and we'll send you a daily digest saying, hey, you've got seven clients that have updated 17 transactions. Here's one example from my demo org, right? You have a client that's updated two transactions. It was Acme. They did it. They've got two. So then I can click in and go straight to my accountant dashboard, which looks like this. So there are the two transactions that have been updated. We highlight them to let you know they're ready for action by you. There's the rest of the transactions that are waiting for responses from the client. So from here, you can add classes, locations, vendors, customers, make it billable, add tax, whatever you need to do, choose the category, and then sync it back into QBO or QBD or zero, and your work is done. Once you've categorized it, that transaction will naturally fall off of the dashboard. We also have some bulk actions here, so you can select one or more transactions and apply a class to them. If you select one transaction, you can split it by class or category. So you got a number of kind of like power tools here for working through a list. Because we see clients come in and update a dozen transactions. We've seen clients come in in a morning and update 300 transactions, right? They're getting caught up for the year and they want to get back to scratch again. All right, there we are. Um, how much does Uncat cost? Uh, five bucks. Uh, that's US, right? For the, those joining us from overseas. So it's uh, $5 US per month per client that you add to Uncat. Unlimited transactions, unlimited colleagues, unlimited client users unlimited settings, right? So we keep it dead simple um, and inexpensive. We want this to be an app that just becomes part of your tech stack. It's easy to add in. It's easy to either expense it to the client, bill it to the client, or just include it in your value-based pricing already because it's very inexpensive to add. Cool, that's us. That's me on the right. That's our team. Jared is our CTO and built the app. Adam is the one who had the idea and Kaylee came up with the awesome logo and a lot of our branding. So that's the four of us. If, if you work with us, we're easy to reach. We're a very accessible team and we're happy to help get you set up if you have any questions. And that's awesome. it. Yeah, and if you're going out to Vegas in, what is it, three weeks, uh, give us a shout. We'll have a booth at QuickBooks Connect. So come by, say hello and grab some cat swag. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Martin. That was, that was awesome. And look, guys, that, that brings us to the end of our panel discussion today. As I mentioned at the start, we've, we've saved some time for questions. I am conscious of time. Um, look, a few of them came through in uh, in the meantime. And look, I know, I know Brendan touched on pricing of Uncat. I've had one come through about um, QuickBooks online integrations with Amica. Um, Martin, I know that obviously some of our integrations do fall under our, you know, completely free uh, pricing, thanks to our, you know, partnerships with certain providers. Did you just want to give a quick insight on the pricing model um, of Amica, specifically when it comes to QuickBooks integrations? Yeah, generally, um, depending on if you're paying, uh, you know, annually upfront or if you're paying on a monthly basis, we're kind of in the $12.99, um, $17.99 uh, US uh, per month range. So if you're paying upfront um, for a year, it's it's twelve ninety nine. If it's month to month, it's seventeen ninety nine. That's US dollars. 
Um, so we try to, and this just in terms of like what that includes, um, basically like a, a typical package will include up to 10 integrations, um, also 10 business trackers. Like one of the things that we also um, provide in conjunction with integrations is uh, like automated reporting as well, which is, which is really useful and also um, a good engagement tool or a conversation starter that you can sort of send um, to your clients. Um, we don't have any limits in terms of the number of orders or transactions. So that, that $12.99 annually or $17.99 a month, um, that basically accommodates an unlimited volume of orders or transactions. Um, and that information, um, as I mentioned earlier, is being synchronized daily. Um, and all of the features and functionality, um, you know, in terms of uh, allowing you to transform that data, obviously that's all included too. Um, in terms of support as well, um, it's important to mention that all of our products uh, are fully supported by people that have very in-depth knowledge, um, you know, not just with accounting packages, but also the apps that you that you happen to be working with as well, you know, whether it's, you know, Shopify or Square or the like. Um, and that support is completely free. So like, you know, if you're having a, a difficulty, maybe someone made a mistake in, in Shopify and that information's um, flowed, flowed into the accounting package, maybe you're looking for some assistance in configuring an integration um, in the ideal way for you. Um, or, or maybe it's just, you know, some, some general support about how are you reconciling the data or, or what's a good process for, for checking and reconciling the data. Um, so our support team is really amazing in, in that regard. And, you know, with, with all of our products, we kind of like to make it so it's not really like another product or another headache for you to manage. You know, we, we like people to really um, engage with our support team and, and, and interact with them because, you know, ultimately we do want to save you time. We don't want to give you another, um, you know, complicated app to have to learn how to use and to manage. So um, it's just a very, very efficient, you know, way of going, okay, I can just engage with support. They can help me sort out the problem and I don't need to invest a lot of time in this thing. Yeah, no, awesome. Appreciate that, Martin. And Brenda, one that's come through as well is Uncat. It looks like an extremely useful application. Can't believe I haven't heard of this. How can I encourage my clients to use Uncat? Yeah, it's a great question, right? Because that's that's uh, the proof of the pudding is always in the eating, as they say. Um, you know, the, the key for us is you're, if, if, if your clients are happy, you're going to be happy and then uh, the world goes round. So, you know, we find the best way is to get, get in front of it, send the client a communication, usually an email or the next time you chat with them and say, hey, the, the old way, which is typically a spreadsheet, but maybe it's an email or something else. Hey, we're going to switch to this other way because it's going to save us both time. It's just going to be easier all around because it's always going to be up to date because it's syncing data instead of an export. And we're going to be able to capture information. It will automatically let you know when we need information back from you and it won't bother you when we don't, right? We don't send notifications to clients if their dashboard is empty. We just won't bother them. But when they have yeah. transactions in there that need their attention, we'll shoot them a note. So it's always good to give the client a heads up before you add them to Uncat. That way, when they get that email from us saying, hey, your accounting professional, Brandon, needs information back from you. They're not like, whoa, how did this app know who my accountant <laughs> is, right? He's like, it's a, it's a genius, but it's also kind of scaring me. So give them a heads up first, then add them to the app. And then thankfully, when they click that magic link, they'll come to the dashboard. They'll see a little instructional video. Truth be told, most of the clients just close it because they see it and they're like, oh, I get this. It's pretty similar to spreadsheets, just faster and easier to use. I can get in and out of this better. I can use it on my phone, right? Spreadsheets on the phone, regardless of uncategorized or not, are just not easy to do yeah. because you're limited by real estate. So we make little transaction cards on the phone. So it's easy to update from there and add receipts and attachments from your camera roll or your, or your files on your phone. And so we see a ton of clients using that. So that may be a selling point for some or all of your clients is to say, it's going to make it easier. You can just do this from your phone. You don't have to be in front of the computer. You don't have to wait till next week when you're back in the office to do it. You can do it when you're out and about. But yeah, shoot me a note if I can help with the clients. We're always happy to do a little quick demo too. If you want to uh, wrangle some of your clients onto a call, we can show them around. Uh, but honestly, that's pretty unusual. Most folks are able to add their clients and the clients just kind of get it and they'll start using it right away. Yeah, 
No, awesome. Thanks for that, Brendan. And look, again, Brendan Martin, thank you so much for your time. Guys, to close this out as well, um, I saw a few questions as well in the Q&A. This webinar will be recorded and uploaded across our YouTube, and we'll also email the link to all registrants and attendees as well. Uh, I know it will be across Amicus socials. I assume it would be across some of the Uncat socials as well. Um, so all followers can get their eyes across this. Um, yeah, really, uh, really an insightful topic. Again, thank you all to all the audience. And again, uh, Brendan and Martin for your time today. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks, Thanks everybody Brendan. for coming. You guys. Thanks. See you, folks.